All right, board gaming enthusiasts, the hobby question for today, because there are a number of games out there that fit this role. I've been organizing my collection, asking this question that that kind of popped in. Games that got a reprint, second or third edition, or an update, where the update, both in quantity and quality and gameplay, was vastly inferior to the previous edition, almost where it's like, why did you update the game or why did you change the game? Just keep the older one in print. And I'm not necessarily talking about one company acquires a title to another company. I'm going to give an example of a favorite game in my collection. But how I came on to this question really, really quick as a framework lead-in, I have three piles of games in my collection. And and by piles, I mean organization on the shelf or over to the side of the Fritz gaming table and the Fritz cave uh, games that I play. The first group, I should have said group instead of piles. The first group of games, these are games that I regularly play, either with the gaming group or every month. So they're literally on the side of my table. They, They don't have a permanent shelf space because they're always in rotation. I love playing them. The second group of games are games that I enjoy. They're on the shelf. I enjoy. I wish I could play them more, but they're they're not casual games. They need the stars to align correctly. What I mean by that, Twilight Imperium. TI is an amazing game, but you just don't bring TI to the gaming club. You, you call up your friends and say, hey, you want to do TI this Sunday? And you plan for that. Or Descent First Edition. Kingdom Death Monster. I I love KDM. It's an amazing experience, but that's the type of game where you kind of plan, you know, Gloomhaven. And then the third grouping of games are games that I enjoy, but they don't hit the table as much because I'm a fanboy of, of the IP of the titles, but there's competing experiences. Okay, examples of that, um, Relic and Space Hulk. These are Warhammer 40,000 games that are a fantastic experience, but I'm also a major Warhammer 40K enthusiast and player, regularly playing 40K. So when I play 40K, I want to get some board gaming experiences. In addition to that, yeah, I'll pull out Space Hulk, but I often feel like, hey, I got 40K. There's other tabletop 40K. There's other gaming experiences that I want. So that's that's the three-pile analogy of how my collection breaks down. And in exploring it, because I'm organizing some things, um, I, I realized that there are some games that I have a specific edition. I want to get the new edition. I love the game, but it's just not there. Or there's games where I bought a newer edition of it in addition to the older edition because I loved it so much and I could just see it's vastly inferior. So I'm going to give an example and I'm going to contrast it, compare it, and then just out of curiosity turn it over to you guys in the comments and see what we can build. So Pathfinder, the adventure card game. This is a title that is in my first pile, my first pile. Now you'd think, well, Fritz shouldn't be in your third pile because you're also a major D and D and RPG fanatic. You know, I've been following your channel, checking out your D and D vids. Aren't you kind of burnt out on the RPG type experience? How is this in your first pile? Because uh, the game delivers in so many ways it has leveling up it has a story to it it randomly populates by drawing cards and you can kind of if you get into it tell a story with the cards based on the location it doesn't detail everything out but it gives enough of a framework that i find i can fill in the blanks with my mind have a role-playing experience we don't need a dungeon master slash game master to do it and it really captures it in that you level up. Um, As you go through the story, you get to increase your stats, you get to pick more powers for your character, and you get to acquire more items, more followers, more spells, more weapons. I mean, it, it works for what it is, and it plays very, very well. Takes up a little bit of time to set up and populate the decks ahead of time. But the first edition, Rise of the Rune Lords, and they have some other additional paths, that are stories, but the mechanics are all somewhat similar. It works, and I love it. I will be completely honest. I love it so much. I have two copies. I have one copy that I play all the time, and I play with um, my friends, and it's got it's got some good wear to it. It's got some wear, and, and that's like an honorable type wear. 
but I've acquired a second title brand new set that I have stashed in my closet literally just so I have it because I love the game so much. So I was really excited. Now, I should also say uh, the game itself, mechanics aside, a lot was thought out. The box is big. It's hefty. It's a card-based game. It's got hundreds and hundreds of cards to it. There is a insert to it, a plastic insert pre-molded that allows you to organize the cards, the adventure path, stores the dice. So not only can you freeze it in between games, but it's perfectly organized, ready to go. The card quality is okay. It could be better. It could be thicker. But being a card-based game with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cards through these adventure paths, um, it it works. It's good. It works. So I was excited when uh, they announced that there's going to be Pathfinder the Adventure card game, second edition. So new adventures, new characters, new items, um, refinement on the mechanics. And, and the mechanics in the first edition were okay. But like any first edition game or whenever you make that edition jump, like, I expect a refinement with that. You know, Side Contrast, um, Warhammer Quest, those series. With Games Workshop, we started out with Silver Tower, and it worked. If you look at Blackstone Fortress compared to Silver Tower, the rules are better. It refined. Um, look at Zombie Side. Zombie Side Invader, the current edition of that rule set, is refined, is better. So it's not a question of, like, well... The rules should have been better the first edition. It's a natural evolution. So I was excited to say, hey, the second edition's coming out. Can't get enough Pathfinder. There's going to be some rule refinements. Um, and additionally, what I liked was the idea that it was going to be a core box of adventures. But then there were going to be multiple adventure paths that you can lay in and lay over and play. So I was really, really excited for it. And now it's been out for a number of years. And I have the core. And I also have the, the first um, adventure path for it. But I still go back to Rune Lords. I still go back to the other sets. And the reason why is, first, the components took a massive, massive downgrade. And when you look at the, the layout, the form, the components from first edition to second edition, second edition, the box has no insert. It has some pieces of foam and some cardboard dividers. It works, but the cards shift. And if there was just a similar plastic type insert, that would have been amazing. So right away, it's kind of a challenge with setup and takedown, and it's, it's not as clean. The card quality was downgraded even more. Um, now, artwork and presentation of the cards, the layout of the text and the artwork... It's changed. It's different. It's evolved. I have no comment on that because it's completely subjective. Um, I kind of like the artwork. A lot of people don't like the artwork. You know, that's if it looks good and it's functional, we can make an argument either way. So I'm putting that aside. But card quality is absolutely worse. So we're looking at that. And then the pack in tokens for various conditions, like if you get poisoned or you need to. Uh, mark your character because there's an effect. These are the worst punch-out tokens I have ever seen in my life. These are the worst tokens out of any single game. And, and like, smash that thumbs-up button if you have the second edition for Adventure Card Game Pathfinder. Like, what the heck was going on? I'm, I mean, just, I'll make my own tokens, and they look better. It's just It's just crazy. So, a complete downgrade with how it works and how it operates. Okay, let's, you know, it's a functional game and we're going to play it. And if the story's good and the game is good, you kind of overlook that as you get into the narrative. That's, that's what I was, the effect I was kind of taking. But then the rules changes. They refined parts of the system, but now they've added in a lot more effects to attract, uh, to, to track. And I, I understand from the perspective of a game point of view where you have effects like poison, paralysis, um, charm, it, it builds to the narrative, but some you have to be really careful. Sometimes when you add these things into a game, the bookkeeping, the remembering, the interaction drags the flowing of the game down. 
it, it kind of drags it down a little bit. I almost wish those conditions were like you're affected, poisoned, banish a card. You know, I'd rather see in-game mechanics simulate that. And I might not be happy banishing or losing a card from my hand, but I understand the narrative of what it's due, doing as opposed to adding more stuff to track. So I find the game plays a little slower. The last piece for me that I'm going to turn over to you guys, and I'm a big enthusiast. I mean, I play both editions. I like it. But when I look at the first edition sets, and I'm like, really, guys, you, you could have built on this even more. I was excited for additional Pathfinder content. Absolutely. Can, can never get enough. I mean, I'm playing the digital over and over and over again from that perspective. But in exploring that, the idea was there would be regular content updated. You have the core box, which I won't say it's crippleware, but it's, it's a very, very intro quick play path but then regularly there were going to be these updated boxes that bolt over the core you know one a year and now we're like three years or so past that and it seems like the whole project has stalled and with that i wonder what's the future of this are there so many first edition sets out in the wild so many people have that first those first edition sets whether you're starting with rune lords or or moving on and you can still purchase them. So people coming in, are they looking to buy the first edition sets? I, I just, we lost a lot of traction. And if you're going to give a stripped down core box that's not necessarily a complete system to play, then you need to keep that boosted with regular content and not your Adventurers League or, or little promo cards here and there. That's That's the direction. So I feel like the game has stalled. And I play second edition, I have it, I enjoy it, but more often than not, I find myself returning back to that first edition. Examples, examples in your own collection or examples where a second edition, you were behind it or, or a third edition, a new print run, a new edition, but just it didn't work out and they should have stuck with that first printing. 